Alright, from first principles, you know that the change in entropy, uh, entropy, uh, entropy uh, equals dq over t, uh, and dq equals ncp delta t, uh, and ds equals ncp delta t over t, hence for ds over uh, s2, uh, the inter integral of ds over s2 and s1, which is in this case your two temperatures, equals ncp uh, delta t uh, dt over t and s2 minus s1 equals ncp uh, log of t uh, between t2 and t1 now you don't have to actually write s2 and s1 delta s would suffice it's just um, to emphasize that there are two different um, integrals question no so solving for delta S equals NCP uh, log of T2 over T1 and uh, that NCP for moles and delta S equals NMCP which is your mass or molar mass times log of T2 over T1 hence 10 times 0 0.018 kilograms per mole times 4,189 joules per kilogram per kelvin times log of 373k over 273 equals delta S equals 235.33 joules per Kelvin. Is my calculation correct? Yes? Okay, let's move on to open systems. The second law for a steady flow process, or, oh, no way. Oh, fantastic. Okay, we're stuck with this. Uh, the change in the entropy of the system plus the change in entropy of the surrounding is larger than zero. Uh, and the total entropy equals uh, entropy of the system plus the summation of the, uh, the heat transfer of the system with the surrounding and the temperature of the surrounding. Oh, no way. Um, Hopefully this will be better for the, with the next slide, but I'm not sure. Uh, delta S, uh, S of the system equals S2 minus S1 is the rate of entropy change for the system, and S2 is the rate at the entropy, uh, entropy of the fluid leaving the steady flow device. Uh, S1 is the rate at which entropy of the fluid enters the steady device, initial, final. And the Q of the surrounding is the heat transfer rate between the system and the surrounding and the T. Uh, of the surrounding is the temperature of the surrounding. So this applies to pipes, uh, heat exchanges, that kind of devices, so non open systems. And the delta S uh, total equals S2 minus S1 plus the Q of the, uh, the sum of the Q of the surrounding and the temperature of the surrounding. Uh, and that is always larger or equal to zero. Second law. Uh, for both closed and open systems are very similar. And both entropy change terms have the unit kilowatts per Kelvin and uh, the equation can also be written uh, in terms of kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. Uh, so per, per mass or a constant temperature change. The second law can be applied to analyze a heat engine. Um, Okay, this is an improvement. Uh, the uh, working fluid within the device undergoes a cycle, delta S uh, of the system equals zero. So the whole system does not change. It's a cycle. There are two heat reservoir surroundings, uh, or two head heat reservoir surroundings. One is the hot, while the other is the cold reservoir. And the entropy change of the hot reservoir, delta S of the surrounding, uh, a and en 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 enthalpy uh, change rather in which equals enthalpy change is negative and the uh, uh, sorry from the hot, uh, hot side and the entropy change of the cold reservoir delta s of the surrounding is positive because the uh, the movement of the heat oh. delta 
S of the system plus delta S of the surrounding is uh, larger or equal to zero and the summation uh, and the whole system is going to be zero because it's a cycle. Switching between delta S of the system and the delta S of the system only requires the system fluid flow rate and hence the delta uh, S of the system equals the uh, N uh, of delta S of the system and the, the end of the delta uh, S of the system. So, sorry, two seconds. Let me just see if all the equations are like this. Okay. Some of the equations are like that. I have no idea why. Okay, let's go over another problem. Uh, heat engine cycle operates between uh, hot and cold reservoir temperature of 600 K in K and 300 K respectively. Uh, 100 kilojoules per kilo, uh, kilogram of heat is supplied to the cycle by the hot reservoir, while 50 kilojoules per kilogram of the network is delivered by the cycle. Calculate whether or not the cycle is feasible using uh, N, uh, efficiency is smaller or equal to efficiency of a Carnot cycle, and then use the ent entropy change to confirm these findings. Notice that the energy flows are expressed in terms of a specific quantities, so kilojoules per kilogram, kilojoules per kilogram, and uh, Kelvin. Um, and we'll do, uh, we'll go over the latter later. Um, the heat engine cycle, all energy flows are absolute values. So these are absolute values per kilogram, not, uh, let's say, uh, kilowatts. Um, first, find out the cycle is uh, possible using the efficiency of a Carnot cycle. Find the Carnot cycle efficiency, and we know that the Carnot cycle efficiency is the temperature of the hot reservoir minus the temperature of the cold reservoir over the temperature of the hot reservoir. And uh, the Carnot efficiency is 0 0.5, 50%. At these hot and cold reservoir temperature, only 50% uh, of the heat is supplied may be converted to network. Okay. Um, so uh, the efficiency uh, equals the network over the QH, 50 over 100. Hence, the efficiency of the system is uh, 1 over 2, 0 0.5. Comparing this to the Carnot cycle, they are equal, so they are feasible and reversible. It should also be possible to test for feasibility, reversibility, and irreversibility using entropy. That's what we're going to do now. The total entropy change, delta S, total uh, is the sum of the three entropy changes. Delta S, delta S of the surrounding from the, uh, from the hot, and delta S of the surrounding to the surrounding from the cold reservoir. This time I have three parameters. So the total uh, entropy equals delta S of the system, delta S of the surrounding H, and the delta S of the surrounding of the cold reservoir. Um, the uh, working fluid within the device undergoes a cycle and periodically returns to its original state so that this, the entropy change for the system is zero. So imagine uh, all of that have to equal to zero. And the entropy change of the hot reservoir uh, surrounding equals QH over TH, negative 100 kilojoules per kilogram uh, over 600 equals negative 0 0.167 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And calculating the delta S of the surrounding for the cold reservoir, the heat transfer to the cold reservoir must be found and constructing an energy in envelope around the inner circle of the heat engine cycle. Uh, the inner circle is the cyclic operation of the system which experiences no overall energy change over a cycle. So the whole system is put into this parameter. And the first law states that the quantity of energy entering and leaving the cycle must be equal. So uh, QH minus QC equals the network and QC equals 100 minus 50 equals 50 kilojoules per kilogram. Entropy change of the cold reservoir and the total entropy change of the surrounding, QC over TC, 
um, 50 kilojoules per kilogram over 300, which is 0 0.167 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. Again, one, it's an ideal system, so it's exactly the same as the previous, and the total equals 0 minus 0 0.167 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin plus 0 0.167. Uh, 0.167 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin equals zero for the cycle. Well, for the whole cycle, the total entropy change equals zero. These results are consistent with the previous one, and uh, the cycle is just feasible and reversible. So, another problem. An ideal reversible refrigerator, refrigerator operates between a low temperature reservoir of 276 Kelvin and a high temperature reservoir of 298 Kelvin. The net power input is 0 0.08 kilowatts and, and that the heat withdrawal rate from the cold space is one kilowatt. Calculate whether or not this cycle is feasible using a coefficient of performance uh, being equal or smaller than the coefficient of uh, performance of a reversible fridge and then use the entropy change to confirm these findings. Again, it's the exact same step, re-emphasizing how to do uh, feasibility calculations using coefficient of performance. And note these, this time, energy flows are expressed in terms of total quantity. So this doesn't really apply per kilogram. Uh, it, you don't need to know what is the mass transfer throughout. You know how much heat is going to transfer. Now you can calculate it, uh, cal you can spec it, Anyway, that's beside the point, sorry. Uh, the heat and workflows are reversed and the total quantity kilowatts are used. So find out the, if this cycle is possible using COP. Uh, find out COP of the reversal fridge. So we know that COP is TC over TH minus TC, uh, which is 276 Kelvin over 298 minus 276. Uh, this is from last topic, and the COP uh, on a reversible fridge equals 112.5. What does that mean? Anyone? Should I pick on someone? What does a COP of 12.5 mean? So how much energy do you need to transfer a packet of energy? Let's say you have a packet of uh, 1 kilowatts or you have a packet of 12.5 kilowatts. How much energy do you need to transfer this for a reversible fridge? Exactly. So it's not efficiency, it's about moving a packet of energy, it's free energy transfer effectively. You're getting 11.5 uh, kilowatts of energy free of charge because you're stealing from it from the atmosphere or from any fluid. Uh, the minimum net work input needed to move unit amount of heat between these reservoirs. Uh, COP QC over a network equals 1 over 0 0.08 and the COP is 12.5. So comparing this cycle to a reversible cycle, they are equal, so it is technically a reversible cycle and they're feasible. Uh, it is possible to test the feasibility and reversibility irreversibility using entropy and the total entropy change delta X total is the sum of the three entropy changes entropy of the system surrounding of hot and cold. So again, exact same step with the and signs for some reason. Delta S total equals delta S of the system plus surrounding plus uh, the sur uh, surrounding hot and cold. The work fluid within the device undergoes a cycle periodically returning to the original state. So delta S of the system should equal to zero. And entropy change of the cold reservoir is uh, QC over TC, one, uh, negative one kilowatts over 276 equals negative 0 0.0036 kilowatts per Kelvin. Uh, and the 
uh, to calculate this entropy for the hot the heat transfer to the hot reservoir must be found by constructing an energy envelope around the inner circle of the refrigerator cycle so again uh, you assume that is your system and the inner circle represents the cyclic operation of the system which uh, experiences no overall energy change over a cycle now this is just an assumption so. The first law then simply states that the state at which energy enters and leaves the cycle must be equal. So D, uh, QH minus QC equals uh, the network and QH equals 1 kilowatts plus 0 0.08 kilowatts equals 1.08 kilowatts. So the QH is gaining that energy, uh, sorry, uh, has that energy. Uh, entropy change of the hot reservoir and the total en uh, entropy change are given by uh, entropy change of the surrounding hot equals uh, QH over TH. Uh, 1.08 kilowatts over 298 equals uh, 0 0.0036 kilowatts per Kelvin and they total to zero. Um, these results are consistent with the previous one. This uh, cycle is just feasible and is reversible. Um, just so you know, this is, uh, all these divisions are slightly different from your uh, student guide. That's basically all that is. Um, just a question for you now. Um, it's going to go back all the way to the first topic. Um, a 20 kilogram bag of sand is dropped 50 meters. It falls into an ingenious container that insulates it perfectly from the environment. This is your tutorial question. Uh, to which form of energy is the potential energy transfer? Calculate the amount. Five minutes. <laughs> 